Meta's Reality Labs division cost the social media company almost $4 billion in the first quarter alone, weighing heavily on profits amid Meta's so-called year of efficiency. The company is now aiming to draw up support by pitching the metaverse as a haven for job training and education. That's familiar territory already for HTC. Their Vive headsets have been put to use by surgeons and firefighters, allowing high-stakes training in the safety of a virtual world. Here to discuss is Dan O'Brien, HTC America's president and global head of of enterprise. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. It's so interesting to me because we talk about the metaverse. We mm -hmm. see, you know, Mark Zuckerberg legless moving around a meeting, but we already are seeing in use applications for this stuff. So talk to me about HTC's pro like where where is it being put to work? Sure. And I think, you know, metaverse in general has been kind of really grandiose and, and everybody thinks it's this new thing that has to happen right away. It is down the road. It is something that actually will evolve into, but right now there's a lot of real world applications, um, professional use cases, whether it's in the public sector, healthcare, um, you know, we are seeing, you know, architecture, engineering, construction, great efficiencies, you know, training and simulation, um, designing new products. You know, this is across the board. Like these are real applications being used today. Um, we all have a version of the metaverse, but you know we have something we call the Viverse. Uh, but this is for businesses. This is for corporate use. Um, this is for benefiting your company. Um, you know, this down the road, this avatar and all of us kind of interacting with each other. That's things that are going to happen down the road. And there's a bunch of hurdles that we actually have to solve to get there mm. uh, before that can become a reality. So, so I have two questions for you now. Then, uh, so first, the hurdles like. I imagine some of those are legal hurdles. Uh, and then, but actually before you get to that, you made a comment to us before we, we got to you live with this about uh, immersive products like the VR headsets replacing this and being uh, just as ubiquitous. in daily, yes, as ubiquitous, that's the word I was looking for, as the smartphone. Right. How, how can you say that? Well, you know what, I mean, we made a huge leap this past year in building what we call the XR Elite, which is something that's on the realm of just glasses. Um, these products, we will introduce radios into them just like it, that is in your smartphone. We have a long history of making smartphones and what we call radiated endpoints or terminal points, which is a smartphone. Mm -hmm. um, these products will become connected. You know, that needs a Verizon wireless, an AT&T wireless, a T-Mobile, uh, a Vodafone. Like, you will see 5G networks um, and eventually 6G networks in 2030 uh, where you will actually have connected wearables. And then you'll see headsets that actually have multifunctionality of mixed reality where we can see the real world as well as digital overlays and digital introductions. And then things become much more uh, ubiquitous and easy to use. But you actually have to deliver content to all of these wearables wherever you are. That's a huge hurdle to solve. So part of that is the technology then in getting yes. to that 6G or what have you. What about the human element? Because we've seen some of these products yes. come out before. The, yeah. What was it, the Google Specs, right? Snap had the yes. spectacles, uh, yes. I believe they were called. And like they were people just trendy. Got, well, people got made fun of. There was that, <laughs> like, there's that sort of um, aspect of sort of cultural adoption that sometimes can be a big hurdle. That's right. To solve. So that's why we start with, you know, our company actually stands for innovation, technology, and humanity. So all the solutions that we've been focused on since 2015, 2016, has been solutions that actually bring value, whether it's cost savings into your. Uh, corporate environment, uh, efficiencies of collaboration in designing new products, or training nurses, doctors. Uh, we work, we fund actual developers that create um, solutions to train surgeons. So in other words, down the road, it has to be worth it for me That's right. on a consumer level yes. to wear these things. It has to bring me something that right. my phone... And on the consumer level, bringing. you really don't see anything outside of gaming right now, which yeah, is a smaller audience. I was going to ask that audience. because what is the use case besides just... Gaming and entertainment. Yes, exactly. Right. It, so what some companies can fall into that are kind of thinking, I guess, with an infinite mindset is if they're just thinking about the short-term play and just trying to get uh, a number of users to just play a game or play something like that, they're really not playing the long game. The long game is actually bringing the headsets and the technology into lighter, more wearable, easier ergonomics, 
connected to a network, and then actually changing out the use cases. Once you can actually start interacting with phone calls, once you can start interacting with uh, content that's actually valuable to you from a consumer level, you'll see that broader adoption. But right now, we're still in early adopters and, and enterprise use cases. And what's the expectation for what the market value will bear out in terms of the overall uh, market value globally? Because for instance, this week, China announced a state-backed metaverse platform. What's the expectation for, say, within the next five years? Sure, I mean, I'm thinking, looking at like cities evaluation, they expected it to be a $13 trillion you know, economy and business. And I think that shows one significant opportunity um, to actually grow into the different use cases. But I do think that overall, you know, we will see a very, very aggressive growth. Over the next two years, we'll see really great adoption across financial services, banking with the use of this technology inside of their corporate environments, whether it's training, simulation, hard skills training, soft skills training, collaboration. And then I think what you'll see is kind of very similar to smartphones. I don't know. How that was, you know, how we brought that into the, into our lives and then how we brought that into our consumer lives. You're going to see a very similar trend with immersive technology and products. Just really quickly, there's immersive technology, there's AR, VR, and then there's the metaverse. And I think the yeah. fact that we still don't really understand what the heck the metaverse is is part of the issue here. Sure. What is the difference? How should we even think about it? Is, like, is the metaverse really a thing or is it just immersive it's, technology? One, um, it's today the metaverse is the internet, right? It's what we interact with from a digital standpoint. Uh, without going too far into what the future scape of trying to understand it is, today the metaverse is an intranet um, uh, use case inside of a corporate environment where you can use it for these 20 training simulations. Now that will then be able to be connected to your regular internet. Um, and then you'll be able to actually have brands and things of that nature get involved into um, you know, consumer products and consumer So it adoption. becomes a metaverse when it's bigger, basically. Yes. At, at right now, it's small pockets it. of yeah. interactive experiences. The and minibus. today, yeah, and today we do that with yeah. automotive, aerospace, healthcare. In these specific segments, we bring strong value and efficiency into these companies. And then we look at this broader thing down the road. But we will actually see, you know, the inclusion of, you know, the Verizon wirelesses of the world and the AT&T wirelesses of the world to actually then bring that fruition to uh, the forefront. All right. Well, next time, I guess, maybe we do this interview in the metaverse with yes. our avatars. <laughs> I know. I'm a skeptic, too. That was just, you know, I, again, I don't see this replacing or replace that fast. But we'll see. We'll see. I it's going to happen. Okay. All right. All right. You heard it here first. All right. Our thanks to Dan O'Brien, HTC America's president and global head of enterprise.